right, time for another draft science video presentation. Do something a little different today. Uh, oh, but it's the same stuff. Oh, it'll be different. Uh, probably. Anyway, I did change the website a little just to throw this on top because, um, you know, it's sort of the important bit. So, um, I'll rewrite it, improve it, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, um, the basic argument is the physics described by most scientists today is just unscientific, proclaimed without evidence. Isn't just unscientific. It's proclaimed without evidence. It is illogically full of unresolved paradoxes and contradictions. The universe runs on energy. So that's the key word here. <laughs> you know, uh, movement. That's what the, there is no universe without the stuff moving, you know, and the stuff being the matter. And what's moving the matter? Well, yes, forces. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, that's all you got to explain. Big bits, little bits. That's it. And conventional physics doesn't understand any aspect of it. So that's really the key thing here is they have so screwed up energy. Because really, gravity is energy. You know, photons, big source of energy. And the kinetic energy formula, you know, energy all over the place. And they've just so perverted it. So anyway, I say the kinetic energy formula, for example, you know, one half V M V uh, was willfully created to force reality to match religious daydreams. The inventor was Leibniz. That was his overt effort. Stated it plainly. Newton's physics is too austere, too not enough God in it. Okay, <laughs> fact. All right. Uh, the history, <clears throat> the history of its creation, defense, and eventual acceptance is a mockery of the scientific method. So yes, you know, all of Newton's care and all of that, um, you know, being disciplined, not not saying what you don't know, not speculating and calling it science. Um, you know, all that thrown out the window. Um, you know, let's just do uh, gimmick science. You know, Ken Wheeler, Pharaoh Cell bullshit. Uh, truth was forsaken for agenda. So clearly the agenda of, of the French scientists of that time, Germans, uh, their agenda was first they have to up Newton one somehow. And um, second, yeah, it just, you know, living force, it's, you know, it, 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 it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes us all special to be in a universe full of living force, doesn't it? Okay, evidence was exaggerated, distorted, and quote mine to support a plainly silly notion of reality. And it's, it's plainly silly. I mean, back then it was just VMV. I mean, there was no one half in front of it, so it was already a hundred percent off. <laughs> you know, and uh, they sold it, and people bought it, even though it was a hundred percent wrong. It's still 100% wrong, don't get me wrong, but it was even more preposterously wrong. So instead of being silly, it was ludicrous, and they bought it. All right, so the first one, if I'm in space and I throw a two-liter Coke bottle away from me at one mile an hour, do I receive the same thrust if I shoot a dime away from me at 1,000 miles per hour? And the simple answer is, yes, I do. And I only use two joules to do either one. Both activities only required me to do two joules of work. There. Poof. Poof. That's all it requires. You know, I have special buttons that can shoot dimes, right? I mean, obviously, to shoot a dime, I need something explosive. <clears throat> you know, I need some kind of chemical thing. Um, you know, most likely. I'm not going to have a device that can, you know, shoot something that at that velocity. Um, you know, that's not going to be... That's not going to have to rely on some sort of... Um, sophisticated piece of hardware because high velocities require in most cases um, you have to put a lot of work into it things going very fast in the universe go very fast because they were part of an explosion generally speaking um, they can't get speed any other way anyway um, if so isn't it proof against the kinetic energy formula so it's, it's just that simple if I use two joules to throw something to eject it from my spaceship you can't argue it has 2,000 joules now that it's in space it's silly and if you're gonna say it and you're gonna say it's true then you should have a big pile of evidence to defend it because it's sort of an extraordinary thing to say I used two joules I made 2,000 joules of energy 
I mean, if you're going to say I made a thousand times more energy and I only used two joules to do it. I mean, I only used, it's free energy. I mean, it's an extraordinary statement. You have to defend that. You can't just sit there and say, well, we believe it. For 350 years, we believe it. You know, it's modern physics, but no, it's really not modern physics, right? So we, we can't even, we, oh, it's classical physics. And then they try to say it's Newton's physics when, you know, the real story is that Leibniz, the guy who invented this religion, was Newton's worst enemy in life. And yet they'll say, this is a derivative of Newton's physics, when Newton didn't use this, ever. And everything Newton did, every one of Newton's accomplishments, were made out of him understanding momentum, MV. That's it. Newton did all his work with MV. He didn't use any MV squared bullshit. So, I mean, this is so obviously crap. So you're saying, okay, here, this is just obvious. It's obviously this was a mistake. This is, there's no one thing, you know, they, they, did, they did their physics wrong. Big mistake, okay? They voted for clearly the wrong president. They clearly made a big fat mistake. Uh, and that's it. Just admit it. You know, don't sit there and try to rationalize it or, or fix it because it can't be fixed. It's just too silly. So anyway, that's the circumstance we're in. So, <clears throat> uh, dissidents, you know, all the people who understand that physics is saying extraordinary things <clears throat> and they don't even have ordinary evidence for any of it. You know, the people who understand this sounds like a pile of crap. This wooey entanglement and superpositions and photons that split into two and then they, they, they um, annihilate, but they don't really annihilate because they recreate. And blah, blah, blah. It all sounds like just such a fairy story. And, you know, rational people, there's got to be some of them out there who just say, there's got to be a better story than this nonsense. Uh, but we can't agree, the dissidents can't agree on anything. So, so they can't organize, they can't, you know, formulate the arguments, they can't do anything to be constructive. And so, so I guess I'll play some D. Hilster because, you know, he's running this organization that's supposed to be doing this science dissidency thing. And they just ruin it all. I mean, the credibility of it just goes right down the drain because he just supports all kinds of flat earth nonsense. You know, his own pet theory of expanding earth. Well, that sounds like another hugely extraordinary claim for which you have nothing. <laughs> you know, you don't even have ordinary evidence. You just have a seems like thing. Look, the continent spread. Yeah, well, that was inevitable. Okay, you put one big blob on anything spinning, it's going to spread. <laughs> You know, those are just basic logical rules you can figure out in your own head that, um, not a big surprise. I mean, if the, if the first continent was just one blob on the earth, right, it's just a blob, yeah, that's asymmetrical. You know, and a spinning thing, that ain't gonna, that's not gonna last. But anyway, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, so we'll do some D. Hilster. Um, he's supposed to be... Um, soliciting the argument against ether, and we've been through this four million times, and I'll just say the same shit over and over again, and nothing ever gets done. So anyway, he starts the stupid show with this stupid, you know, he does a half hour of commercials, and that's all this is. I mean, so he's really punishing regular viewers, because they automatically got to say, well, I probably shouldn't turn this on until a half hour later, because it's just going to be him doing the same routine again. And it's just so tedious and he's doing it for what purpose right because he might have one new viewer today so for the one new viewer he's going to punish the 50 who aren't new viewers <laughs> and yes this is how low the numbers are it's, it is sad that they're just you know the world is a borg um people are got shit for brains and they're just sheeple and they just eat the shit the little you know the, the little master dogs tell them what to do, and they just accept it. Ugh, terrible Borg. All right, so we'll play some of this. If the facts don't, if the facts don't fit the theory, change the facts. I'm David Hilser. You've reached science Saturday. Science, no, Saturday science shots. Man, I need to warm up before I get on here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You need to figure out what the whole agenda is. So he stole this thing from Franklin, who, you know... Yes, it was redundant also. Franklin pushed his own shit, yes. Um, because there wasn't enough interaction between the other people. But it was better than Franklin. <laughs> you know, and so he stole it from Franklin so he can do the commercials better. He does the commercials better, so it's important. And he has little, 
whatever he calls them, sliders or bing bongs or something, you know. And they're so exciting. You know, you get a little visual of a glass of water spilling or something. Yeah. Right, folks, but today we're gonna, you're going to try to convince me that ether exists. So this crap. We all need this crap. You know, people with a scientific bent, people who want to show me the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. And they really love this horse shit. You know, compelling. Oh, wait a minute. No, not so compelling. Hello, hello again. I'm blah, 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 blah. And so he has obviously hasn't figured out which mic he's talking into. So he's talking into the wrong mic. He's got the wrong mic. I understand technical issues. I've had them. <laughs> okay, they're irritating. But, you know, if you're going to be on for two hours, you really, you know, should make sure things are working. The Saturday Science Chats, and this is sponsored by the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society of Distance Science. And if you're a person that normally or wants to come in the green room, well, guess what? I had it all screwed up. I didn't have that fix. Uh, a couple minutes before the uh, broadcast, I realized I did not fix this link because every week I've got to change this, what we call, subdomain. Okay, so I'll jump ahead. So, I, again, this combobulated because when you go in the air and realize your whole green room entrance door is locked and people are outside. Yes, uh, great. One opinion. And uh, I want to thank, again, all of you who are tuning in. It's greatly appreciated. And last week, I do apologize. We had we were going to air with this exact same program. But what happened is we got an opening to get a COVID vaccine. And my dad, who was 82, who... Uh, Hopefully, we'll be in here to help me out here. But he uh, is 82 and, of course, didn't have a uh, vaccine yet. So we got those vaccines. From what I hear, we got the Moderna one. And the Moderna one gives you protection up to 80% uh, for COVID. Uh, COVID. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah you know, it's a 50-50 thing. Who knows? Blah, 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 blah. You know, whether it's you're better off surviving or not. Um, I mean, you know, well, whatever. It's, yes. I, you know, hey. <laughs> it's very good that other people are getting the vaccine. I'll say that much. Great. It's good for me, right? So, um, but yeah, there really isn't, there's no good answers to this thing, right? All the answers suck. I mean, all the choices suck. It's, it's just that simple. So people who want to complain, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to love your policy either. You know what I mean? If they had done it completely different, we'd still be complaining. Because all the answers suck. It's just a shitty th circumstance and you have shitty choices. Let's kill a bunch of old people. Or not. You know. Right, anyway. And if you do do a super chat, obviously I will read that. I have your question. If you want to put up uh, something that will be guaranteed I put up there, you can do a super chat. What's a super chat you say? Well, you can do uh, So a commercial for his commercial enterprise. So here's a commercial about how you can, you know, do the commercial thing and, you know, give us money and blah, blah, blah. So it's not just some simple thing where you say, look, do you think we're doing anything good here? Are, are, are we on the right side? Then support us. If not, don't. Can't make it just that simple. No, no, we gotta spiel because people need to be spieled. If you don't spiel on them, they can't do. They can't. They can't figure it out on their own. They need to be spieled. You know, we need salesmen to do everything for us. Sell us on everything. We can't go left. We can't go right unless somebody sells us on it. Fuck. So depressing. Turn to the basics where things went wrong and start anew. I think that's from our website. So our mission is to be an organization blah, blah, that promotes critical thinking blah, blah, without malice. Yeah, yeah, without malice, without intelligence, without logic, without anything. No rules at all except, um, you know, you all have to be friends somehow or something. Yeah. You all have to wear your smiley face t-shirt or whatever it is. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's a battlefield of ideas. And somehow he wants the battlefield to be... Well, let's just all get along. Nobody has to win. The, the truth doesn't really matter. We just, you know, we'll just have this fluffy conversation for no purpose. Oh. So again, not very appealing to me anyway. And that is, yeah, you can say, hey, Big Bang's wrong, and we will not, you know, call you stupid or crackpot. Um, because we are... No, we'll just say you can't talk to us anymore. <laughs> Frankly, I didn't do anything more than just tell another guy he was rude. That's what I did. I, I said, one of David's friends, I said, you're rude. Okay, <laughs> and so, yep, that's, no, you can't do that. And when I called the other one what he is, a creation scientist. And a liar, of course. I mean, of course he was lying. 
you know, about all the secret books that the librarians aren't allowed to show us. You know, they have, you know, he's, he's got a theory that all the libraries have secret books in a vault somewhere. And they're told they can't let anybody see the secret books of knowledge. I mean, obviously a silly fairy story. And I said, what am I sitting in this room discussing a silly fairy story for? Why, why am I doing that? It doesn't seem like something productive to do. I mean, truth or loop-de-doo nonsense, some guy just made up bullshit. I'm supposed to waste my time talking about that. All free thinkers and have the ability to think on our own, although not a whole lot of people do, sad, uh, to be an organization that supports and publishes and promotes series for outside mainstream, to provide a forum debate for topics in physics, cosmology, philosophy, and mathematics, and to provide a forum. Yeah, but you don't publish it in any useful way. So, you know, in the, the real point ought to be is when you find an actual good piece of evidence somewhere against something or a good argument, you ought to highlight your good arguments and just leave it at that. You ought to glean through all the bullshit and put the stuff that really is saying something important right on top, <laughs> okay, so everybody can see it. Because this isn't working, frankly. Just a bunch of noise. Just to have a bunch of people say stuff and it all just goes into the uh, ether and then that's it. That's it. It turns into jiggling jello, and it doesn't exist anymore as a rational thought. For presenting serious papers and theories without fear of censorship, and to be run and controlled entirely by our membership. And of course, who we are, we are open to challenging mainstream science. We allow and encourage competing ideas or models. What? There's only, the universe is only one way. No, fuck, the universe is not only one way. Uh oh, the universe isn't only one way. So, so even that, you know, you're just overtly saying to me, gee, I'm going to say things that are so fucking silly, there's no way you could say, yeah, I want to join this group of nuts. Yeah, the universe is one way. You can accurately describe it or inaccurately describe it. Clearly, it's not both ether and not ether. Okay, <laughs> I mean, it's not both. Uh, the kinetic energy formula and momentum. Those two things are not compatible. You can't have it both ways. One of them's the right answer, one of them's the wrong answer. You have to pick a side. There's one universe that doesn't work by 15 million different mechanisms. That's why overtly conventional physics is silly because it has this stupid bent space notion and it's completely incompatible with magnetism and electricity and all the other forces that are moving the speed of light. So it's just absolutely true that no way that's going to survive as being the truth. Okay. Um, well, the universe is the universe. That's right. Step back. The universe is the universe. There's only one of them. And um, Yay, you got that right. Except you think the one universe is a fractal, and so it's the same universe all the way down or something. Some sort of mushy Horton Here's a Who bullshit. We have many different uh, ideas about how that would work. Or models. Follow, we all, do follow the scientific method. I think a lot of people say, well, And none of the models are any better, and they're a lot worse in most cases than the conventional ones. So you're arguing against a model being sloppy and unevidenced, and you know the conventional theory has its flaws, and then you're you're proposing a counter theory that's even more flawed and even more wooey and even more full of shit. So yeah, that's not the right plan. Nope. <laughs> yeah, wrong plan. You guys throw everything out for your models and, of course, scientific method. And that's baloney. We consider an idea without accepting it. So, yeah, we listen to 2,000 years of Aristotle saying that, uh, and that's the way you should be. So if somebody comes on with a new idea, a new theory, a new idea, whatever, you should try to consider it. And that's one of our problems. Uh, give the voice to the voiceless, and there, this is where science advances. It doesn't happen outside the mainstream. So if you want to see where science is going, then this is the place. Um, who we are not. Uh, yeah, well, really, it's really not where science is going. Uh, you know, I mean, because it is so, uh, it's, it's just as unscientific. The scientific method was a good idea that you have to have scrutiny. You can't have contradiction. You know, these law, the rules of logic and all that kind of stuff, it's not just about talking or, you know, um, gimmicks, you know. You know, semantics, playing word games, all of this kind of crap. No, science is really about, you know, really constructing... Uh, evidence and durable argumentation, you know, where you do point out the paradoxes, and it's a real paradox. Um, you know, you don't quote mine evidence, you don't, you know, don't quote mine the experiments. Um, you know, you accept what exists as evidence, and you create a, a sensible description of how that evidence um, points. And, you know, but that's not what any of these people are about. Uh, we don't have a specific point of view 
as an organization. Uh, we're a general science organization. We're, uh, we're no, sorry, we're not a general science organization. We don't we don't look at all science. We look at there's so many big problems in physics and cosmology. They're huge. They're enormous. They're gargant gargantuan, and we're going against billions and billions of dollars and lots of egos and people who think they're so smart. Uh, so we're not a general science organization. We go after physics and cosmology because we know fundamentally there's some big, 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 big problems. Um, and we're not New Age. We're not conspiracy or UFO. And we stick to the foundation of science. All right, we're not New Age. Yeah, you are. It's I mean, what's the difference between somebody telling me crystals are running the world and somebody telling me the uh, planets are expanding? You know, they're you know, embiggening every day. Blah, blah, blah. Science like gravity fields, magnetism, tectonics, math, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, our websites, uh, you can go visit us at Science Woke. <coughs> it's an online magazine for critical thinkers. Uh, we were looking maybe to get a new name, but of course, uh, that takes some time. So this year, we're going to maybe rebrand it because... Linguistics people usurp words. Um, I know because. Oh, whatever. This is all. You look, you chose this woke thing because it's all part of your hip de dip de loop de doop de girly kind of crap anyway. So, yeah. So, yeah. Science woke is lame, gimmicky. It sounds like. Pla it's just sounds like you would only write the words in plastic. It just sounds tacky. And you didn't hear any of that because you're kind of a tacky on. <laughs> Yo, you like tacky crap. A linguist, I got a master's in linguistics, and my job for 30 years is getting computers to understand language. So I think about language and words and what they mean. I think woke is a fine word myself. Um, unfortunately, people take it when the woke, what happened? You want to get the short story on woke? woke? Well, why don't you do woke woke then? Or, you know, it's just whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yes, it's, this is sort of a subjective thing, but yes, no, scientists want things that are scientific, and saying science woke is just so, like I said, it's. Ew, way too gimmicky. It's not the kind of clothes science would should be wearing. Was a word that that said, "Oh, people are critical thinkers and their eyes are open." The people in power who didn't like that purposely. Well, and again, the, the whole idea that their eyes are open when they have, you know, really done no research and are just talking out of their, you know, buttholes. We made that into a bad word, so that now we fight each other. Uh, it's terrible, but uh, I think it's totally fine. But connotations come and go, um, and they change. But uh, people weaponize that word for pol political reasons. It's stupid. Um, Naturalphilosophy.org is uh, a critical thinking community. Go on there, and you can, um, in fact, uh, uh, join in our conversations. So you can register, and you can also pay some uh, help and support the uh, uh, organization. And we also have a Wikipedia with over 10,000 pages. Yes, 10,000 pages. The National Philosophy Wikipedia. It's closed. Okay, I'll, I'll jump ahead. <laughs> Why? Because if we open it up. They have donations. It is greatly appreciated, and uh, we really, really want to thank everybody for their donations. Of course, I'd like to thank these pe people specifically for their patronage. All right, so this is every week, every week, every week. We sit around and discuss like we do every in the week. Uh, regular uh, conferences. So uh, we hope to have a good mixture there of that. Um, and our publishing is really going well. Um, between, I'd say, April and May, you're going to see two books come out. I don't know if the third one may be, maybe, perhaps, but we have. Of all three books we're publishing this year, two are ready to publish. One just happened. Uh, ready to yeah, useless mush, right? I mean, it's, it's the internet age, book publishing. I mean, you know, what, what does all this crap mean? You know, it doesn't mean anything. That's what, it, that's what it means. It doesn't mean anything now, okay? I mean, you should have been able to publish it. Just publish it on the internet. You got something to say? Say it. What are you selling books for? What the fuck is that horse shit? publish our proceedings. And we also are out to our first reviewers. My father and I sent our Principia Mathematica 2 book, uh, titled as a complete tool for hacking the physical universe. Right, so hacking the universe. Again, this is more like gimmicky talk. You know, you should have figured out that, you know, yeah, that's not very, that's, that's not a very scientific thing. Actually, hacking is, you know, cheating and conniving and bullshitting. You know, it's escaping your obligations to do things the right way. You know, it's just, you know, shortcutting, shortcutting the physical universe. That's what you're basically saying, you know, ripping it off. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not a good word. And we have that out to two people. Uh, we're now, we're not asking for reviews. So all those people who want to grab a book and see, oh, what are these guys? So, so it does, it, that, does that make any sense? So he wants to edit it to make sure the grammar's right or something. But he doesn't want to edit it because somebody points out an egregious um, philosophical error or scientific error. No, he doesn't want it to critiques. <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to be told that, well, maybe that's just a big pile of shit. And here's the reason why. This didn't happen that way, you know. No, he doesn't want that. If I was writing, that's what I would want. I would want somebody to let me know, hey, you're saying something really dumb there. 
because it's not true. And here's a piece of evidence proving it. Guys, doing it's got to be all wrong. Uh, that's going to happen <laughs> on its own. What we're trying to do is get people and people have two sets of readers. One, uh, our first two preliminary readers, we're going to there, and then. Um, <coughs> Uh, have them because we, they are uh, I say subscribers and they like our, our model so it's good to have people like that <coughs> excuse me and I'm sorry this morning my throat is not good I usually have a booming voice here but anyways we do have that out yeah and your mic sucks too so you failed on both accounts the two people once that's done we're going to do the corrections and we have a second group and that second group is really not again for review they're, blah they're blah blah blah, blah, blah jump ahead oh more skimmy scam you saw that right we've got james maxwell coming back as well but we've got oh, lots of people exciting. here um yeah. which is great we got phil borker coming up he's going to talk about his finite theory oh it's all wrong no folks get the attitude please get the attitude to get the attitude so look the whole point here is right if you're going to be a dissident the first the thing we all have as the enemy is the gigantic borg of conventional science so just take the arguments we're making against conventional science and use those and then don't let anybody talk about their own theories <laughs> because it just destroys any continuity. It just ruins the whole um, process of fighting the enemy because you just look like a bunch of loonies. Oh, shit. I mean, I told him this like whatever, four years ago that this whole agenda is is pointed wrong because you're just going to get stuck in a bunch of infighting over your your personal little perspectives rather than doing your job which is to create uh, enough credibility to have a fight with uh, the Goliath to have some chance to you know throw a rock in between its eyes what is going on and keep your mind open that's what's most important. So Phil is going to be talking about his work. You always find work. My dad and I couldn't, our, our, our book and our ideas about how the universe works couldn't exist if we didn't spend a lot of time reading about other people's stuff. We stand on the shoulders of people like Burkhardt and Danu, and, um, and now we are also... Uh, uh, so, you know, he keeps bringing up the Danu guy. Like I said, not a very credible explanation for magnetism. The infinitesimally small amount of attractive energy created by swirling shit inside of a fluid. <sighs> You use 1,678 watts to create the swirl, and you get 3 watts of attraction. I don't think the universe can afford to be that inefficient. I don't think every little magnet is that inefficient. Uh, standing on, on uh, Newton and other people. So, anyways, knowing about other people, of course, disruptive, uh, rewriting the rules of physics that will be coming up with um, in May, I believe. We'll be coming up. Obviously, everybody's just stomping on the hysterical characters in, in the wrong way, right? The ones who deserve to be smushed into the the ash heap of you're a stupid jerk, like Leibniz, Leibniz, um, you know, are revered, and the ones who do deserve some sort of, um, you know, status, um, they just slander by saying, yeah, it's Newton's physics. No, it isn't Newton's physics. With uh, Stephen Bryant. Really great guy, talking with him. And this will be a lot of fun. We got um, Dennis McCarthy. He's going to be talking about Thomas Newton and Shakespeare. <laughs> what? Uh, following in the footsteps of the great people of this, the NPA, which was, that was what this organization was called 20 years ago. They'd often have people outside physics and cosmology talking about critical thinking. But this is sort of a ringer. No reason we know, we know uh, uh, this is because he has a great talk. Go back on our channel. Look up um, the uh, Natural Philosophy and Dennis McCarthy and Expansion Tectonics. He gave a great talk on Florida and Florida. I may have him do that again because we've got a lot of new people now. A lot of times people can't get to all those videos. So, um, of course, yep, Dr. James Maxwell is back because now he can, I think he can start at 10 p.m. and go to bed at midnight after the session's done in Perth, Australia, I think it is. Don't get me on that. He's going to kill me. But it's on the West Coast, not the East Coast. Sydney's on the other coast. So I think that's right. And, of course, are you next? Uh, we do have, actually, a couple of people contacting me. We're looking at what they are proposing to talk about, and um, we'll have them on. Uh, my, my goal is to give people a forum and for the, let the world judge. And uh, we are not, are not an organization that supports anybody's theory. We support all, everyone's theory. Um, and that is, of course, that they are in, in, what we, in, a, in a way that we think are... Uh, it, it done in a scientific, use a scientific method. Oh, bullshit. Is that your standard? Oh, hilarious. No different from any other, other science, so. Alrighty. And, oh, pl play today's bumper. Alright, let me do that. So, I, I mean, this part is even too ludicrous, right? He's overtly saying, I go, yes, here, I'm going to play you a little bit of crap and just waste your time. I mean, it's like. What the fuck? I'm gonna you know, just as it's a commercial in the commercial. It just doesn't make any sense. Why he would think this is somehow appealing to smart people. I mean smart people like bumpers. Oh yeah, I, I 
it really made my day the little bumpery thing you know we need this whatever this okay. is okay this. i believe this is it <laughs> i thought when you put outside the stuff together you want to press the right button here we go yeah, isn't this, yeah, so everybody smart needs this. They need music and graphics moving and yes, 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 yes. I can't understand the subject unless you show me some cartoons first. And they're not even interesting. It's, this isn't like a Bugs Bunny cartoon or something. It's not like I'm going to get something out of this at all. Oh, it went on forever. So, yes, today is Convince Me Ether Exists. But before we go, if you're going to convince me, you got to know what I think right now, okay? And I'll tell you what I think. It may be surprising to you, all right? And that is where I am on Ether. And Ether theory could be correct. I guess la, 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 la. The biggest difference between me and every and all the people who are Aetherists. You know, I, I hear, I know one person only, and I know a lot of Aetherists, one person only. Who's an etherist? I'm saying this to you, everybody. In fact, I'm going to put this right. I'm saying it to all of you. I only know one of you. And it's nobody who's ever on here that says ether could, could be wrong. Everybody who's an etherist, for some reason, thinks that ether is right. So, um, anyway. Well, yes, people obviously can draw conclusions based on the evidence they've seen, okay, or been exposed to, and they have reasons for believing. Like, uh, why people seem to default to this idea that the universe needs to be made of stuff you know that there couldn't be like spaces between the stuff it has to be just full of stuff everywhere you know vibrating jello um i don't know yeah i don't know why i don't know yes i am a person who thinks about this every day so um whether ether is right or our part model right so to me also I think it's very confusing because people usurp ether for everything. Oh, there's an ether in your rooms. Oh, uh, Franklin, I know you say this. Oh, you and your dad. Uh, just get over it. You're an ether, ether theory. No. Ethers are waves in a medium, and we have to start understanding that. It's one of the problems with ether. We always are saying, oh, anything that fills the universe is ether. No. All right, so the whole wave thing, again, is just a frequency thing. This, the universe has frequency in it, and bullets can be fired at a frequency, and so there's no... This whole wave crap is just such a, a huge mistake, uh, you know, wave theory. Eh. But it is, here's what, you want me to give you the brutal, see this? This is science, please. Um, this is science, please. You see this? And I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to give you the brutal truth. It's the um, ether is something that people want to, uh, they want it so badly that they're going to call anything and everything ether they can. They're going to try to get the mainstream to, to believe in ether. They're going to say, oh, Dave, you and, you're going to go to ether. Oh, Glenn Burkert said to me on, on camera, and I, he's, he and I can debate. We're good. We're good. We're allowed to debate. This is just debating. He says, David, you'll come around. Meaning, I'll come to ether. It seems like everybody, want, instead of looking at it critically, ether. Yeah, so they're not going to like that. <laughs> they're not looking at it critically. They haven't looked at it right. Blah, 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 blah. You know, they're not going to go for that. Uh it's just this domino thing, right? You're just saying, look, I mean, the dominoes really just can't work for a lot of reasons. The geometry's all wrong, all of that kind of stuff. You can't have a straight line in the universe. Then with dominoes, you end up with diagonals. It just doesn't really work. There's no geometry for it, blah, blah, blah. So I've never heard a counter argument to that simple fact. Um, but what do you need them for? I mean, if you can move the domino to hit a domino, then why not just throw the domino all the way to the end? Why pretend it has to hit a whole bunch of other dominoes? You're, it seems like Ether's job is to say how they make everything that it's Ether. It's Ether. That's what it is. I'm sorry, but that's what I see. I, and it comes from the fact I don't say Ether. You know, person, when, we, when I first talk about my dad and I say, he goes, well, this is what we think it is. Could it be right. It could be totally wrong. I mean, that's the right attitude to have because it is wrong. Every theory is wrong. Every model is wrong. So admit it if you go up there and you are just so fixated with it so anyways so i don't even know what that means every theory is wrong <laughs> no seems like some of them end up being right you know the round wheel working kind of theory yep good theory round better than square wheel ugh good this is where i am waves and a medium that's what ether that's how ether works and we're gonna watch a, we're watch a video about that Okay? Gravitons are not ether, even though, yes, I know you have Newton. And he had there's no point in saying graviton because there's no rational definition of what one would be. Uh, half the physicists would say a graviton is a pulling particle. That's nothing like photon and electron, then. 
add this luminiferous uh, ether light, and he talk, they talk about gravity. But the problem is, we have to get what we can't just say everything is an ether. We have to have some types of definition. It's in my way, my name, my idea is ether is our, our rays in the medium. Um, Glenn Durkin, I'm pretty sure, thinks that. Most people, and Jeffy, I'm sure, thinks that as well. But gravitons are not ether. In fact, the gravitonic model isn't an ether model, in my opinion. And did Newton at his time know the difference between it? The there's no graviton model, so whatever that is. Like I said, that's there's just there's no solid information on even where the graviton word came from. So they didn't, they didn't know. So people read into it. Oh, uh, Einstein talks about ether. So it, it, it seems what I see with ether people is they're always saying how oh Einstein loves it. Oh Newton loves it. Um, oh when they talk about space time, that's really an ether. Oh it, guys, that's not the way to go about anything in science. Science is not a convincing, it's not politics. And that's one of the things that bugs me. Like I said, I know one person who's an etherist who said, ether may be not the right answer. Oh, I know, the wrath is coming up. Yeah, well, why would somebody say, you know, I know lakes are full of water, and then they'd say, well, it could be it's not full of water. I mean, if they know it already, then they know it. Now, I'm not saying they know it for good reason, but I'm just saying, obviously, I know some things that, yeah, I know, there's no bent space. It ain't the right answer. I know it's got an incredibly silly, you know, it, the invention of it and the proof of it is so sloppy and so unscientific. I can know it's wrong just because of the bad science. But I can know it's wrong because yeah, it doesn't fit with anything else in the universe. And the universe really isn't made out of two different fundamental mechanisms. The fundamental mechanism is the fundamental mechanism. It's not both. I mean, bring it on, bring it on. Anyways, um, the particle model of theory could be correct, what we have, could be. Um, waves of particles, that's, that's how we do like, they all travel together, like waves of bombers. Um, and no, it's not a photonic model, and no, it's not an either model. It's not. And if we think in our profession, in our area, in our area that we all want to think about, I mean, we're all critical thinkers, hopefully, and we're all thinking about all this, we have to start identifying and talking with the same words. If the rule is in science that this word that I have can mean any... So it is really kind of ironic, you know, that he's just taken over this science chat thing and now he's, he's just basically arguing his theories and pretending it's something different than that. Anything. Who cares then? What, does, what do those words mean? I mean, what does that mean? What does the word mean? If we can't understand that ether, what ether is, which is a medium which waves are transmitted uh, through collisions, I don't know. And, and, uh, and the photon model. The particle model, we, we hear this all the time. A photon model has, has photons. It doesn't have waves of particles. It's not the same. Photons, a, phot a photonic model, for instance, Newton. He had bigger ones and smaller ones, and somehow they carried frequency. That's why Dad says, <laughs> you look at, at mainstream, you've got this sort of like package, and in this package it's carrying frequency in it. I mean, obviously, ether models can be continuous jello, or they could be made out of dominoes. Both of those could be ether models, in my opinion. You know, you can have clumps of ether that are just stuck to each other. Whatever that is. <laughs> okay. So it could be particularized and still ether. It's not a particle model. If the if they're transmitting the energy from one place to another, that would be ether. Uh, if it just flies there, that would be particle. And all that stuff. And of course, ethers are going, yeah, they're right. There's, there's a reason for ether. Well, there's another model. So I, where I am... Either, either could be correct. I'm not convinced that it can't be. Um, if you ask my opinion, um, as, as David DeHilser's gut feeling, gut reaction, I've known about either for 30, 40 years, and it just, nothing went on like a light bulb in my head, like, ah! And I've had other things happen. So in my aha moments, either isn't one of them. Never has been. Where my dad's model of light, that was. Of course, this is me and my opinion. So it's not, could, it, could the model particle model be all wrong? Yeah. Could the either model be all wrong? Yeah. Could the either model be right? Yeah. Could the particle model be right? Yeah. Could both of them be right? I don't think so. Uh, well, who cares, but whatever, the whole point is to make the arguments, and you're just evading them. <laughs> but anyway, continue. Different. But that's, that's not for us inside. Okay, what is Ether? We're going to run this um, uh, video on it, uh, Ether, and uh, I like this one a lot. In fact, it's got 60,000 views on Jeff Yee. I'm jealous I have um, view count envy. <laughs> Because you know it's important, you know, being a YouTuber, and it's 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 not whether or not you're a good person and you're a good critical thinker and people enjoy talking with you. It's how many clicks you get. Up, get. I'm kidding. I'm being totally sarcastic, of course. But Jeff Yee puts together these great videos. Um, I'm a super fan. I love his model. It's an it's an etheric model. Um, we sort of go out a little bit about what it really is, but I thought he put together a good good uh, video. We're gonna watch it. Um, I need. 
Let's understand that the real downfall of Jeff Yee, to, in my opinion, is the fact that the whole thing, the whole agenda is built around this notion that the human race needs to find a source of free energy. And so we need new physics because the current physics doesn't give us any free energy. You know, we need to find some super energy to exploit so we can travel at light speed and do all this blah, 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 you know, faster than light or whatever. Yeah, you know, we need the, the special Star Trek technologies. <laughs> and, uh, that's a bad agenda. You know, that's not really doing science. That's doing something else. Would you people in the green room or in the um, um, chat, if you can please let me know to make sure you can hear this. I hate having it uh, be show, uh, showing up. So uh, um, anyways, let me get that up there. And uh, here we go. I'm not going to play all this crap. Uh, you know, no doubt I've already heard it years ago or whenever. So I'll just jump into it a little bit. Jeff's good. You know, nice presentations. Yeah, but who cares? I mean, you know, blah blah blah. Ether crap. Oh, YouTube. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I got to play it. Signal from one side to the other. And so well, one way yeah, I can try we'll and do jump it is ahead. by, uh, I don't know, using a squirt gun full of red dye. I can squirt it into the pool and see whether it can get to the other side of the Olympic swimming pool. And because it's a particle that, you know, the, the dye has to physically get from one side of the pool to the other. And probably you figure, no, it's it's not really going to do that. It's going to get totally lost in this swimming pool. Although it's already biased towards the ether, I admit. But oh. if, if you put a speaker in one side of the swimming pool and you loudspeaker underwater and you play that, then I think you would actually very easily be able to receive the signal on the other side because the particle doesn't have to travel all the way, doesn't have to swim all the way across the pool to get to the other side. Right, it won't swim. Uh, the fact is, is that you'll get a lot of distortion from every bit of movement in the ether. So again, it doesn't really work as a model for how, you know, we're sending energy into space and you could still receive the TV shows, you know, way out in space or something you can still receive it as what it is it's not been distorted by some ether currents and all of this kind of crap so clearly it's not a very good analogy for um you know how light and other things move through space because they obviously do it very um reliably as if there isn't anything in their way you know, no ether wobbles Side. So as an etherist, I would kind of point to that analogy for, you know, why is it a, uh, a signal can be a long transmissible because the particle does not actually have to go from point A to point B. Only the pressure wave has to go from point A to point B, which is actually easier, I think. So. Uh, well, no, it's easier. It's okay. That's where we disagree. Mechanically, it isn't easier because what you have, what we see as, for instance, light going through space. So look, it's like this energy argument you can make with dominoes, but dominoes only work in gravity, right? So without gravity, <clears throat> the energy, you could argue, if you push a domino into another domino, it has to perfectly conserve the energy to keep hitting other dominoes. And the trick is on ground, you keep taking advantage of gravity. You know, you've already set them up with potential energy and you're knocking them down using gravity, essentially. <clears throat> so it's a huge help. And in space, you'd have to, the dominoes would have to be so perfect because any heat loss, any, any losses will and eventually mean that the domino can't fall over anymore. So you, you would get, a, you'd get a, a more honest impression of the fact that, you know, this transmitting thing has to be perfect. And how can it be perfect like the swimming pool if the ether has got all kinds of other stuff going through it? It's all going to interfere with each other and it's going to be a terribly noisy environment and there's no way you're going to be able to send light, billions of light years, you know, flipping these dominoes um, through all of that noise and it doesn't get disturbed at all. Not very realistic in my opinion. Space from a, a star that's 10 billion light years away. Space is mostly empty. There's stuff in it all over the place, yeah. And even in our model, it's infinitely down. It's traveling through another, there's, there's just... Infinitely down. So as soon as you start saying this stuff, okay, it goes infinitely down. You know, there's universes inside the universes, inside the, you know, the atoms of the universe, and then inside the atoms, all the little pieces are universes. 
I mean, it's just, what, you don't have any evidence for that crap. So why are you selling it? It's just, we can all make up anything. We can make up any kind of wooey bullshit. You know, three pigs all the way down, and turtles all the way, whatever. You can make up anything. So why just, why, why argue, why include arguments that are no evidence and you're just saying, I like this particular fantasy theory? infinite levels of it so yeah but when you it's just like shooting an asteroid toward the middle uh, or a probe toward the middle of the galaxy the, the chance of it going through the galaxy without hitting anything is great and that's the way we see light is the same way whereas in a pool you have an immensely dense kind of thing you you don't have if you're sending um a, a, you know atoms through a dense thing of atoms which are much close much more closely packed than let's say it's not like, you know... Look, the point is there's no straight lines, okay? I'm just saying when you, when you make it out of dominoes, there's no straight lines. You're, you're screwed. Certain places, you can't go in a straight line. You have to go in some kind of crooked line. And it just doesn't make any sense that stuff's going crooked because it's too obvious that it goes really straight. Straight lines are a fundamental fact of the universe. That, I think your analogy but doesn't as work. A, as an etherist, we do, in fact, uh, fill space with this extremely dense substance, just like the pool of water. So what we see as, you know, empty space, I mean, even empty space is not that empty. You know, the, the density of atomic hydrogen is, you know, not zero. But, you know, the problem with the particle theory would be that we know how collisions work. And if your particle actually runs into any, I mean, just one uh, hydrogen atom, then it will be deflected right now. For sure, sure, sure. But your model must show that. Just like you can't imagine how a light wave can come. Right, and that exactly explains redshift, frankly. The fact is, is there are some particles in space, and when light travels a long distance, it scatters, and as it scatters, it loses a little frequency, and that's what's causing the redshift, because the photons are being, you know, broken into pieces, scattered, and it takes extra time when the pieces recombine for those pieces to, um, they've, they've traveled a longer path length. And the longer path length means they are uh, redshifted. Travel a billion years. I can't imagine how a light particle could travel a billion years and not run into anything. Yeah, uh, a lot of them run into something. That's why there's so little light coming from these very bright objects. I mean, these these objects are producing a ton of energy, and we only get a little tiny bit of it. So, have you done the calculation to figure out how how based on how little we receive? you know, we could basically calculate how much it's producing, right? So, in a sense, and, and I'm just saying there is some consistency. So, um, with the fact that we're receiving less than would be the clean expectation. If every photon survived, we should receive more light than we're receiving. So, one or the other. So. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, again, it's the matter of what, how much space there is for that particle. And I think that's the difference. So what we see is particles going through space. For instance, light, if it is one particle, a, a photon could be, and, and I'm not, we don't have a photonic model, but a particle that would be part of a light wave, if it goes through a room, you could have uh, 60 million of them uh, a second be in your room with right but that would be too much energy then <laughs> so but whatever continue without ever seeing another particle so the, if you look at the mathematics between uh, the elasticity that's needed and the density that's needed for ether versus the space that you look at for a particle to travel 10 billion years if you look at that mathematically in my opinion, it's not, you're looking at physics then, you're not looking about, I can't imagine it. What I'm saying is, um, the elasticity of, of ether. Okay, so, yeah, so look, this is a good argument to have, so, um, Franklin makes some points, points, counterpoints, that's the good, that's the part that really should take place, but there should be some conclusion that comes out of it in the sense of, um, you know, what are the better arguments and they should be preserved and then you start with those better arguments the next time and that's how this thing should evolve. 
but it never does that. They just have the same conversation over and over again from start to finish, start to finish, start to finish. There's no progression of an argument um, where, you know, the, the intractable points, um, the ones that are really hard for the, the alternative side to defend, um, you know, you see this like, uh, you know, I use the example of like abortion arguments. I mean, you can make really solid arguments about the fact that you really don't have a right to tell other people, okay, that philosophically they have to see a human fetus as special. That is more special than a cow fetus or more special than a chimpanzee fish fetus. That somehow the fetus itself has properties that require us to revere it over all other fetuses. You know, you can't, that's religion. You can't, as a, as, a, as a fair society, you can't sit there and impose that kind of proclamation and say everybody must believe that because there's so much evidence proving that the human fetus is capable of feeling things that the whale fetus isn't. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's where my argument, I'd say that's a pretty hard argument for somebody to escape from that it's overtly rude for religious people to tell other people they have to believe in their religion. Because they don't have any evidence that a chimpanzee fetus is any less special than a human fetus. There's just no evidence of it. Okay, that it needs more protection, that it's more capable of being harmed. So until they can fix that, until they can show me the pig fetus, okay, being, you know, completely incapable while the human fetus is completely capable you know like it's on its little laptop and it's you know engaged in its world and it's capable of feeling so much more it's having so much more profound thoughts um you know, it's a huge argument but you have to have the whole argument to get to that <laughs> argument you know instead of it starting with let's start with one of these good arguments and then let's have an argument about the good argument uh, does a society have a right to impose religion on the rest of the people? Do, you know, can I make an argument about, say, vegetarianism? I can make an argument. I can make an argument why it's good to, to ban bullfighting or cockfighting or dogfighting. I can make a reasoned argument why, you know, there's good evidence that this isn't something you should be entertained by. <laughs> okay, and you shouldn't be betting on it and you shouldn't be using it as entertainment because it involves harming animals and harming an animal isn't that much okay less of a crime than it is to harm a human um, and so it should be a crime it should be something we don't encourage at minimum so you can make a reasoned argument why society has a right to impose but it has to impose when it has good reasoning it can't impose when it's just religious fantasy no but anyway, that's how it, the, that's the form of the argument should be, in my opinion, should be something that takes the argument to the next level kind of thing. And it never goes to the next level. It's just the same argument over and over and over. So, anyway. All right, that's enough of a video. Um, sorry, I didn't warn you before I made the video that it might be a clunker. But yes, it was a bit of a clunker. So... Uh, take the good with the bad and such I mean you have to accept um, the limitations of you know I'm one person here <laughs> <You know? laughs> anyway so till the next time when we'll be back on something more uh, more um, <laughs> the usual let's call it that um, yes, it's just nothing. I got nothing back from Quora yet, so everything's in stalemate, blah, 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 blah. So I have nothing to report, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, the comments section is, is just sock account after sock account after sock account. So uh, nothing new. And such. So this has been a draft science video presentation. And such. Yeah, that's enough.